this video is a real banger because today I'm gonna show you how to turn this boring, awful and weak Russian Republic into this based Russian Empire and I'm gonna do it in a very unique way. That's gonna be the most interesting path to restore the Russian Empire that you have ever seen. Enjoy! The constitution guarantees freedom and stability. Mm -hmm especially in Russia. Most of passes of restoring Russian monarchy are just a huge cringe and also feels unreal. But our today's pass is the only one real option of restoring Russian monarchy and I'll prove it to you today. Good news! The assassination of Kerensky. And of course Kerensky is going to die. The funeral of Kerensky. W w wait, what? He was a patriot? Hell no, man! He was a traitor. A real traitor of his motherland. Oh, mm, well, payment of the brass litovsk reparations. Stupid schnitzel wants to take all my money. And now snap elections. Oh, yeah, for sure. We're going to announce snap elections. We won't do that. Since can't get better for us because Black Monday hits Russia and that's the second hit for our economy. Our economy is truly fucked. And also don't forget about backward industry and austerity measures. That's why we produce less than one infantry equipment per day with 11 military factories. In case of dealing with the Black Monday, of course, we will choose the rightist plan instead of leftist plan and we will initialize the Senate plan of the rightist parties of the Russian Senate. First things first, they will wait the ruble. February revolution anniversary? Does anyone celebrate it? Seriously? That's the worst day in Russian history since I don't know what, since 17th century or something like that. Everything went wrong after that. That's actually everything that has left of the Russian Empire after 20 years of its collapse. Increase taxes. Tax collector will be happy. Oops, that's a military coup made by Lavr Kornilov. Kornilov shall save holy Russia. At least he is better than those stupid liberals and social democrats. As the result of our decisions, Kornilov consolidates his rule. Russia has only two friends, army and fleet. That quote is based. The Denikin Wrangle conflict. Do you need to choose the third option, Kornilov announces alliance with Savinkov, or your campaign is gonna be fucked. Rumors of a monarchist plot in the military. Oh yeah, that's the most important event in the whole campaign. There you need to choose purge them, better safe than sorry. So you wanna say goodbye to the monarchist generals such as Mikhail Gordievich Drozdovsky, but it won't work. And Mikhail Drozdovsky makes his move. March the people of Russia for your salvation. So now Russian Republic is ruled by the Mikhail Gordievich Drozdovsky, a Russian imperial general. Moreover, he was one of the main pro-monarchist generals in the Russian army since the October Revolution. He really wanted to restore the Russian Empire and today we will do it. So thanks to the military coup and military dictatorship of Mikhail, Russian Empire will be restored. And in my opinion, that's the most rational way and the most logical way to restore Russian Empire and of course the only one, which is like normal way. Settle our scores with the socialists. Our mortal enemies, the socialists, are on the run. This time we won't repeat the mistakes we made 17 years ago. Now all traitors will be shot. The great Russian trial is coming. Smash liberalism. Hell yeah. The very existence of parliament with all these speeches and talks has nothing to do with the real politics. Disband them. They should spend their time more productive. So freaking based. Arrest of Boris Savinkov. Savinkov, famous terrorist and revolutionary, was recognized today at the streets of Petrograd. Walking out of one was his conspirative apartments. He was beaten up and escorted to a prison. We finally got the bastard. Arrest of Mensheviks. No one can hear them scream. Shut down opposition newspapers. Hell yeah. A well-made propaganda can destroy the whole nation. We know it like no one else. 
total ban on socialist parties, a finishing touch, the great regency, oh my god, Grand Prince Kirill Vladimirovich and Dmitry Pavlovich have no legitimacy to be the new Tsar, they both are traitors to the crown. Kirill betrayed Nikolai II in the marsh when he sided with the parliament and Dmitry dared to plot behind the Tsar's back. Until we figure out what Romanov is the best to be the new emperor, General Drozdovsky will be proclaimed to be a great regent, the ruler of Russia the great regency. There will be no Russia without a Tsar. General Drozdovsky will play the role of a regent, accepting the title of ruler of Russia. Sim Pabidishi. On 31st of August 1936, we were proclaimed as the new Russian Empire with the new flag. Kinda interesting flag. And Drozdovsky is a supreme ruler of Russia. To save the holy Rus. And of course, the capital of the new Russian Empire is gonna be Petrograd or Saint Petersburg or in Russian Sankt Petersburg или же просто Peter. It's just logically, you know. After focus to save the Holy Rus, our focus storyline will be divided. In one side of it, you will rely only on Drozdovsky's rule, and on the other side of it, you will rely on the monarchists of Russia. In my opinion, we should call the monarchists and we need to unite with them. We need unity. Well, after everything that I choose and when I say fuck you traitors of the Russian monarchy, we will rule alone. That was pretty obvious because I denied it all of those stupid liberals and traitors to form a coalition with me, except one guy at the beginning. Whatever, we can rule alone. Oh my god, we purged almost all of our military. We purged all of Denikin's militaries, all of Kornilov's military and some other military too. Oh yeah, Markov's military, yeah. Okay, so now we will be ruled by the national populists and it's, and it's gonna be called National Stabilization Regime. Damn, now we are not patron autocrats, now we are national populists. And we also sized NRPR. Interesting fact, in real life Drozdovsky died in the end of the year 1918. So it's really interesting how he survived in the Kaiserreich and Kaiseridex universe. Maybe he wasn't wounded in this universe, because in reality he died because of a wounding. Total economic nationalization. Sounds a bit communist, but we're doing everything to restore the real Russian empire. Oh yeah, total nationalization. If you ask a Drozdovich soldier how many factors he can nationalize, he will answer you, as much as I have bullets in my submachine gun. That's based, that's based as fuck. No space for ruthless bourgeoisie. This path is much more than restoring the real Russian monarchy. And I proved it to you. Th that's so sick. Capitalist protest. Dog barks, but the caravan goes on. <laughs> Drozdovsky is just too wee. The second is one of the best that I have ever seen in Kaiser Redux. For real. And to complete the great Zemsky Sabor, we need to restore the borders of the Russian Empire, because you see that we need to control Minsk, Kiev, Vilnius, Riga, Yekaterinodar, Georgia, Vladivostok and Bukhara. Now it's time to restore the borders of the Russian Empire. Because without that you won't complete our monarchist restoration. W -w -w wait what Russian Empire restored in the Far East? Oh my god, another one Russian Empire. We won't recognize Kirill I as our Tsar. Because before that we said that he is a traitor, traitor of Russia. So we've got one Russian Empire on the Far East and Russian Empire on the mainland Russia. <laughs> Jesus, it, uh, I can't say nothing about that. That's hilarious. That's really hilarious. W what did just happen with my army? That's all generals that has left in it. No, seriously, that's everyone who has left in my army. Mm -hmm. The Trans-Siberian Crisis. So we can demand a formal apology from the Mongolian government, we can demand uh, a part of our Trans-Siberian Railway, or we can just declare war on Mongolians. Well, I guess that second option is the best one. Let's try just to demand our Trans-Siberian Railway in a peaceful way. 
and Mongolians agreed to do that. Amazing! Less 300 political power. Year 1939 does the first expansion in our today's campaign. So three years have gone and Russia gained no lands before that. Looks weird. But this year our expansion will finally start. The first question that we will solve is gonna be the Central Asian question. In 14 days Kazakhstan is gonna be attacked. Kazakhstan, welcome back to the motherland. Turkestan, I didn't forget about you too. Welcome to the club, buddy. So the conquest of Turkestan demand their full incorporation. Oh yeah, cavalry divisions. And they refused. War means war. Camels, don't worry, I'll save you. You are gonna be safe in the Russian Empire. Boom! Minus Turmeni Manamonu Munabuma. Now the whole Central Asia is secured. The next question is gonna be the question of the Don Republic. Question of the Don Republic was just ignored by the game, so I'm gonna invade them using cheat cards. I just don't have any other option. To be honest, invading this piece of I don't know what isn't hard at all. They are gonna be crushed, okay, in a 10 days or maximum in a 2 weeks. And by the way, Schnitzel has started the war against Croissant. Holy shit, Croissant's fraction is huge. They even got totally South Africa. Everything is going according to our plans. What to do with Kaban? Um, we will start sending agitators. Cause consulting with Ukraine isn't the best option. Especially when we want to restore the real one Russian Empire in its borders. So consulting with Ukraine would look awful. Man, you are the best lap dog that I have ever seen cause you declared war on me. And that means that Ukraine it won't be involved. It's not an offensive war in case of Russia, so... <laughs> Goodbye, Kuban. You have just destroyed yourself. And the next one is Georgia. Russian coup is gonna be way more than enough. Hmm... What about Armenia? Demand their incorporation. And what about Georgia? I'm going to annex it. Armenia made the right choice. Now the main question is gonna be Ottoman's question and... Iran's question. Iran has annexed Azerbaijan, that's the main reason why I want to destroy them. And what about Ottoman Empire? Well, it just exists and we need to end up this mess. Poor Iran, that was a bad decision to annex my Azerbaijan. I mean, we all understood that it's gonna happen. Iran was liberated but in a new borders without Azerbaijan. Confrontation that lasted for around 400 years has finally ended up. The next question which needs to be solved is Mongolian question and question of the fake Russian Empire. So that's how Russian Empire looks like in June 1940. Invade Russian Empire? Hmm, I guess we need to try our luck. The Far East Takeover. Claim the Far East, all Russians must be under Russian rule. As you can understand, they didn't agree on a peaceful reintegration. I totally broke the system because I'm entering Far Eastern Republic of Transamur from the Mongolian lands. So Chita and Nerchinsk will be easily captured by me because, come on, I'm entering from Mongolia, not from the Russian lands. Um, okay, minus Mongolians. Along with that, we have divided Tibet. Soon Vladivostok will fall and that's gonna be the end for the fake Russian Empire. The fall of Vladivostok. A peace deal has been signed between the Russian Empire and the Russian Empire. Hmm, Japan, I didn't forget about you. Now the only thing that we need to end the Regency is to liberate Eastern Europe. Forget to mention that all of Chinese lands that I conquered as well as Tibet I just gave to Guangzhou government because I can't even liberate Tibet and I can do nothing with those lands, plus I don't want to annex them, so I gave them to the Chinese government who fights against the Japanese rule. Cause we truly dislike those soul slavery sphere of Japan. Hell yeah, Drozdovsky unites Russia. Now let's deal with the Japanese empire in a peaceful way and we will just demand Sakhalin. Cause, you know, before 1905 we have fully controlled this island. In 1905 it was divided on two parts, Russian northern part and the Japanese southern part. Treaty of Vladivostok, you know what, let's try to demand Kurili. 
If it doesn't work, we will just demand Sakhalin. Russian diplomacy is so easy, you know. Um, they have declined our suggestions, so we will demand just Sakhalin. And they agreed on that. Now everything is fine on the Far East. Finally, we can fully focus on Eastern Europe and liberation of it. Let's try to buy Belarus. I always liked that option. It truly shows up the real victory of capitalism. If we want to get any country, just buy it, lol. And we can try to get West Karelia as well. Seriously, we did it. We bought White Routinia and they agreed on that. Bro, you will be just incorporated. Coop succeeded in Belarusian National Republic. I will right annex it into Russia. So thanks to Belarus it will be much easier to conquer all of those states and then move to Berlin. And I didn't forget about Karelia. Oh, interesting fact. Vladivostok supposed to be a Russian San Francisco, but it didn't work. Vladivostok uh, didn't become a local San Francisco. Brudas, I think that we are ready for this conflict, so I have prepared a ton of forces. Most of them are located on Lithuanian and United Baltic Dutch front line. Uh, the least group of forces is located on Ukraine, it's only 48 divisions. Also 24 divisions are located in Finland. The good reason for the war is gonna be demanding Galicia. If Ukraine denies it, that means war. And as you can see, road to Kyiv and other Ukrainian cities is opened. Ukraine made the right choice, they denied our ultimatum, then it's war. In a few days, United Baltic Duchy has capitulated. Kyiv was captured, Ukrainian frontline has collapsed, Lithuanian frontline is collapsing. Monarchim, I guess you are doing something wrong here in Finland right now. Because Russian troops are coming closer and closer to Helsing force. In the next few weeks, Kingdom of Lithuania has capitulated. Meanwhile, we crushed Galicia Lodimeria. Boom! That's the end of this horrible war. So, let's do it to Germany and not only Germany. Russia has annexed almost everything, Kimners gained only part of Belgium and Alsace-Lorraine. They is successful. Now, finally, the end of the Regency in August 1942. With hard times over Russia and we can finally end the Regency and restore the monarchy. And that's the post-war border of Germany, so nothing has changed a lot, except the fact that I have annexed Poland, Ukraine, White Ruthenia, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia and Finland. The Great Ziemski Sabor of 1942. Let us see what Prince Roman has to offer. Prince Roman Petrovich. The other candidate is Grand Duke Boris. And the Ziemski Sabor's decision. Long live Tsar Boris II or long live Tsar Roman I? Um, let's see both of them and then we can decide who will be better. So it's Boris II, he is more than 50 years old. Hmm, Roman I, he has a poor health, so probably mm, the previous Tsar is better. Yeah, he definitely looks like a Russian Tsar. Now that is a definitely a rise of the Russian Empire after 25 years of collapse in 1917, when Tsar Nicholas II abdicated his throne in March 1917, and in September 1942 we have restored Russian monarchy again.